Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. With fresh trouble brewing at home, President Trump prepares to take center stage at Davos. I'm Gavin Ramshorn in London with the latest from the World Economic Forum. And the man who practically invented the ski film craze has passed away. A look at the legacy of Warren Miller is coming up. Good morning. So glad to have you with us on this Friday. I'm Missy O'Malley. Matt Elwell will have our forecast in just a moment. Chet Lehman is off today. For a second day, President Trump is bringing his America First policy to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. And though the president may want to focus on working out more favorable trade deals for the U.S., new information is being reported on the Russia investigation that may be stealing the headlines. CBS's Gavin Ramjan explains. During day two in Davos for President Trump, it's news from home that threatens to overshadow his trip. According to the New York Times, Mr. Trump wanted to fire special counsel Robert Mueller last summer, but chose against it after White House counsel Don McGahn threatened to resign. The president reportedly said Mueller, investigating Russian interference in the 2016 election, had conflicts of interest. We have now a constitutional crisis looming, and that's the reason why we need to protect the special counsel with legislation. Another recent controversy following the president overseas is alleged use of a profanity when referring to people from African nations. Among Mr. Trump's meetings today, a potentially awkward one with Rwandan President Paul Kagame, the incoming head of the African Union. President Trump wraps up his visit with a keynote speech where he's expected to tout his America First policy, a policy some leaders are hoping will soften. Of course it will be America First, but if he could add on but not alone, or but America first, and we need cooperation with the rest of the world, or whatever, that could be nice. At the conference, billed as the center of globalization and free trade, President Trump insists his message has been well received. There's been a lot of warmth, a lot of uh, respect for our country, and a lot of money, billions and billions of dollars, is coming into the U.S. The president also made news Thursday by threatening to withhold aid money to the Palestinians unless they resume peace negotiations with Israel. Gavin Ramjorn, CBS News, London. Now, President Trump flies back to D.C. immediately after wrapping up his speech this morning in Switzerland. Matt, a little bit more to follow on that, a lot more to follow on some tricky oh, yeah. roads and bad hey, weather I patterns. wanted to talk a little bit. I got a chance to go visit a classroom in southwest Montana, and uh, we went to Gallatin Gateway School, got to talk to them about weather. Lots of fun. They're working on their weather uh, segment right there, and um, it's a lot of fun. We get to talk about clouds, cloud formation, lightning. Uh, or graphic lift, all these big <laughs> words. Okay, just uh, just to let you know, they have a test today. You guys better ace that. Oh, they yep. better ace so, that uh, test. Thanks for letting me come into your class <laughs> and so talk. Awesome. Pretty awesome stuff. Hey, your uh, daughter but, better do well on that my, test. Uh, today. My daughter is part of that class, yeah. by the way, and she better <laughs> ace it. Hey, uh, ice impact. We're calling on the slick side this morning. Our temperatures for the afternoon will be slow to warm up. We'll be into the 20s. We do have some snow showers possible as you head into the day today. Temperatures holding into the 20s for most of us. We're going to talk more about the impact of the uh, snow and ice uh, for the day today and what you should expect for the weekend. That's all coming up in a few minutes. Sending here some good juju. Thank you for that, Matt. <laughs> now 633 in our top local story for you. Two people are dead after a house fire in the immigrant area. A call to 911 came in after 4 a.m. yesterday reporting that a neighbor's house was on fire. Fire crews tried to make contact with anyone who might be in the home but didn't receive a response. Once the fire was put out, bodies of two people and a dog were found. The names of the victims have not been released and the, the investigation is ongoing at this time. We're conducting an investigation on where the fire may have started, how it started, what not. Also, you know, how, how the deceased individuals, how they may have passed. Um, and then, of course, our part as the sheriff's office, if there's any foul play, any crimes committed or anything like that. Now, the Park County Sheriff's Department says it could take a couple of days before information becomes available about that fire. And Miles City Law Enforcement is investigating a fatal shooting in the Moon Creek area southeast of town. The shooting involved a man and a woman, leaving one person dead and the other hospitalized. Custer County Sheriff Tony Harbaugh says that he's releasing few details on the incident other than telling us that the shooting took place between a male and female, but would not confirm which individual died and which one is in the hospital. Sheriff Harbour says that the scene is secure, the public is not in danger. He also went on to say more information will be released on this incident as of this morning. And the Granite County Sheriff's Department has released the name of a man who died on Wednesday on a head-on crash 
on Interstate 90 near Beavertail Hill. 19 year old De, uh, De, uh, Stefano was killed at the scene after crossing into oncoming traffic, hitting a semi truck. Passenger in his vehicle was injured. The semi truck driver was taken to the hospital but did not appear to be seriously hurt. No word on the condition of the passenger. Montana Highway Patrol says speed and the road conditions are not to be considered factors in the crash. They don't know why Stefano's truck crossed the center line. He was a detention officer for the Broadwater County Sheriff's Office. And a street in Butte that's prone to many accidents because it's so narrow will be made much more safe this month. City planners will restrict a portion of George Street between Phillips Avenue and Oregon Avenue to one-way traffic only. The action was taken after residents along the street complained of multiple accidents involving vehicles crashing into fences and into homes along that narrow stretch. The portion of the street will become a one-way effective on February 16th. And Montana State University is reporting that Shelley McCammy, the executive director of the Museum of the Rockies, is retiring at the end of the year. McCammy so has we been the faced with a longest serving director of the museum's history. She joined the museum as its first marketing director back in 1987. She says her greatest accomplishment at the museum was nurturing an outstanding team of professionals. And we've got some convenience stores and convenience medical care, and now it's all joining together. Bozeman's Health is opening its first convenience care clinic on the corner of Oak and 19th. It's called B2 Micro Care, and will be staffed by a nurse practitioner and patient care tech. It's for anyone who does not have a primary care physician, and if you do have a minor ailment, the clinic will be accepting your insurance. It has a menu-based pricing for self-paying patients. You can either make an appointment online or walk on in. And a movie filmed in Ennis is receiving special screening as of last night at the Emerson Cultural Center. It was a homecoming of sorts for actor Bill Pullman, who is a part-time Montana resident. Pullman has taught classes at MSU. He also performed in Montana Shakespeare in the parks in the 70s. The Ballad of Lefty Brown, an action-packed Western, is receiving warm reception. Pullman, along with the film's director, were at the event and hosted a little Q&A after the movie. The film is about cowboy Lefty Brown, who witnesses a murder of his longtime partner and then sets out to find the killers and avenge his friend's death. Interesting side note, both Pullman's children and the director's children have various roles in the production. And staying on the film topic for a moment, ski film pioneer Warren Miller passed away yesterday at the age of 93. Miller was a big part of the Big Sky community. Warren Miller Performing Arts Center is named in his honor. MTN's Morgan Davies takes a look back at the ski film legend and what his work has meant for so many of us. I spoke with some people who were close to Warren Miller, all of them telling me what a pioneer he was in his field. And although he will be greatly missed, his legacy of ski films will live on. When you get to the bottom of the hill, you suddenly realize, you know, you can't take this memory away from me that I just experienced. Warren made his first ski movie in 1950. He is credited with over 750 sport films. He was very focused on what he was doing. He had a vision for what he wanted to create. Miller split his time between Big Sky and Okers Island in Washington. I really didn't have a mountain home. All the places I've ever been on skis with my camera, I settled in Montana. Huge legacy behind and, and families, families that ski together. Um, he leaves a big legacy behind in, in, in the genre of filmmaking, video production, distribution, theatrical tours. I spent my professional life taking pictures of people, observing what people do and what they said, and uh, I either took movies of it or I drew cartoons of it. It's my take on the world. Planning has begun for a memorial service in Big Sky at the Yellowstone Club. Reporting in the studio, Morgan Davies, MTN News. So I got a chance to meet Warren Miller exactly 10 years and one month and one day ago. Wow. And the reason that I remember that, it was at the tail end of 2007, and I'd given up cookies as my New Year's resolution that <laughs> right? year. Right. And I was beckoned by a Colorado film company to go up to the Yellowstone Club and interview him. And when I walked in, Lori had made 12 dozen <laughs> Christmas cookies. And she, of course, she offered me some, and I said, I have two days left in my resolution. We did this wonderful interview. When I went out to my car, Warren had left me a plate oh. in my front seat. And as I started to drive down the canyon, I realized Lori had left me a plate as well. Oh, so you and um, yeah. working up at the Yellowstone Club for the last 
five, six years, he is not just an ambassador, not just like a grandpa. He really is something certainly else. Certainly an icon. Yeah. So we, we, he will be sorely missed. And we will um, hopefully be bringing a little bit more of the service when it comes time for that. Happy Friday to you. We're so glad to have you with us. When Montana This Morning returns, we take a look at the mobile trivia game sweeping the nation. But first, a little look at your Friday headlines ahead here at CBS on 7 Sharp. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. How the president's reported attempt to fire special counsel Robert Mueller could affect the Russia probe and his possible upcoming interview with investigators. And we're digging deeper into a story that we've been following about millions of Americans who may be exposed to radioactive contaminants in their drinking water. We'll show you how to make sure the water in your home is safe. See you on CBS This Morning at 7.